Hi, and welcome back to another video or another reading. And so today I got the awesome idea of reading the Kula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, the shorter analysis of action or Kama. And I think this is a very interesting for all of us thinking, you know, what is Kama and how does it actually work? Because the Buddha was quite clear um, in stating that trying to analyze Kama or um, analyze why things happen the way they do, um, that is an imponderable for anyone who is not a Buddha or an enlightened being, even an Arahat wouldn't necessarily um, be able to see these things, even though they are fully enlightened themselves. Only a Buddha really can see through with the eye of the Dhamma, so as to actually analyze the Kama of other beings and know why this and that happened. And so that's, as I understand it, one of the reasons why the Buddha said that karma is an imponderable and so for us normal humans which are not Buddhas by themselves um, we need to really study and pay close attention to the words of the Buddha and with that um, I'm going to go ahead and read. This is not uh, too long of a text, but I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, for Definitely for anyone with an analytical... Um, what is that? That's like an analytical side to them, or, you know, an analytical mind. The intellectuals, maybe, they would be interesting, interested in... Why do things happen, right? Like in science, we try to figure out why does this happen and we don't really know what is gravity. It's just like kind of seemingly there. We understand what it does, but we don't really understand uh, the context of the why it is doing. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of things like that. And um, so I thought would be interesting to hear what the Buddha had to say. And so, I think um, based on that intro, I hope that I inspired some curiosity in you. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and read now. And we're going to be reading the Kula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, the shorter analysis of action. And this is uh, the translation by the Venerable Tanisaro Biko. And I think we're good to go here. So there's no intro on this text. So you're just going to have a little intro from me. And now we are going to begin the reading. Oh, we should... Make uh, the intro first. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Homage to the worthy one, the honorable one, and the perfectly self enlightened one. And there's a shorter version where we say Namo buddhasa. Homage to the fully enlightened one, or homage to the perfectly enlightened one. I kind of like uh, both translations, I'm not really stuck on one of them. So here we go. I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One was staying near Sawati in Jeta's grove, 
Anatapintika's monastery. Then Supa, the student, Toteya's son, went to the Blessed One and, on arrival, exchanged courtesy, courteous greetings with him. After an exchange of friendly greetings and courtesies, he sat to one side. As he was sitting there, he said to the Blessed One, Master Gotama, what is the reason? What is the cause? Why baseness and excellence are seen among human beings, among the human race? For short-lived and long-lived people are to be seen sickly and healthy people, ugly and beautiful, uninfluential and influential people, poor and rich, low-born and high-born, stupid and discerning people, are to be seen. So what is the reason and what is the cause why baseness and excellence are seen among human beings, among the human race. What a great question, as one who observes. Student, beings are owners of karma, heir to their karma, born of the karma, related related through karma and have karma as their ar arbitrator. Karma is what creates distinctions among beings in terms of coarseness and refinement. I don't, and then the student says, I don't understand the detailed meaning of Master Gotama's statement spoken in brief without explaining the detailed meaning. It would be good if Master Gautama taught me the Dhamma so that I might understand the detailed meaning of his brief statement. In that case, student, listen and pay close attention. I will speak. As you say, Master Gautama, Supa, the student, responded. The Blessed One said, There is the case, student, where a woman or a man is a killer of living beings, brutal, bloody-handed, given to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after the death, He or she reappears in the plane of deprivation, the bad destination, the lower realms, hell. If on the breakup of the body after death, instead of reappearing in the plane of deprivation, the bad destination, the lower realms, hell, he or she comes to a human state, then he or she is, is short-lived wherever reborn. This is the way leading to a short life to be a killer of living beings, brutal, bloody-handed, given to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. But there is the case where a woman or a man, having abandoned the killing of living beings, abstains from killing living beings and dwells with the rod laid down, the knife laid down, scrupulous, scrupulous, merciful and sympathetic for the welfare of all living beings. Through having adopted and carried out such actions, on the breakup of the body 
after death, he or she reappears in a good destination, in the heavenly world. If on the breakup of the body after death, instead of reappearing in a good destination, in the heavenly world, he or she comes into the human state, then he or she is long lived wherever reborn. This is the way leading to a long life, to have abandoned the killing of living beings, to abstain from killing living beings, to dwell with one's rod laid down, one's knife laid down, scrupulous, merciful, and sympathetic for the welfare of all beings. There is the case where a woman or a man is one who harms beings with his or her fists, with clods, with sticks, or with knives, through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in the plane of deprivation. If instead he or she comes to the human state, then he or she is sickly wherever reborn. This is the way leading to sickliness, to be one who harms beings with one's fists, with clods, with sticks, or with knives. But then there is a case where a woman or a man is not one who harms beings with his or her fists, with clods, with sticks, or with knives, through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of a body after death, he or she reappears in a good destination. If instead he or she comes into the human state, then he or she is healthy wherever reborn. This is the way leading to health, not to, not to be one who harms beings with one's fists, with clods, with sticks or with knives. There is the case where a woman or a man is ill-tempered and easily is ill-tempered and easily upset, even when lightly criticized. He or she grows offended, provoked, malicious, and resentful. Shows annoyance, aversion, and bitterness. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in the plane of deprivation. If if instead he or she comes into the human state, then he or she is ugly, wherever reborn. This is the way leading to ugliness, to be ill-tempered and easily upset, even when lightly criticized, to grow offended, provoked, malicious and resentful, to show annoyance, aversion and bitterness. You just think about it. Have you ever seen one who is very, very angry or upset? There's not really many things that are as ugly and resentful and disgusting as an angry and upset person. That was just my own thought. Continuing on. But though. But then there is the case where a woman or a man is not ill-tempered or easily upset. 
even when heavily criticized, he or she does not grow offended, provoked, malicious, or resentful, does not show annoyance, aversion, or bitterness through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death. He or she reappears in a good destination. If instead he or she comes back to the human state, then he or she is beautiful wherever reborn. This is the way leading to beauty, not to be ill-tempered or easily upset, even when heavily criticized, not to be offended, provoked, malicious or resentful, nor to show annoyance, aversion or bitterness. And so as Buddhists, the only weapon we really have when someone is annoyed with us and angry at us, even if they're gonna kill us, the only weapon we have is, we kind of have four, but one is metta, and then karu metta, love and kindness, and then karuna, compassion, and what are there more? There are mudita, that is sympathetic joy, not, you know, but if you're enlightened, you kind of, you know, could be happy about, I don't know, and then the fourth, fourth, one would be upeka, equanimity. So those are the weapons of a Buddhist. The weapons of the mind. And continuing on, there is the case where a woman or a man is envious he or she envies, begrudges, and broods about others' gains, honor, respect, reverence, salutations, and veneration. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in the plane of deprivation. If instead he or she comes to the human state, then he or she is not influential wherever reborn. And this is the way leading to not being influential, to be envious, to envy, begrudge, and brood about others' gains, honor, respect, reverence, and salutations and venerations. So we can see, just if I may add this, that if we have sympathetic joy, number three, metta, karuna, muttita. If you had this one, then you cannot have envy and jealousy and begrudging and brooding on others' gains or veneration or respect because if you have sympathy, Muttita, sympathetic joy. Then you would be happy seeing other people um, get great gains and honor and respect for doing things that are actually honorable and respectful and worth venerating in this world. And so, in this way, Muttita is a weapon or a protection for our minds and our well being. Continuing on. But then there is the case where a woman or a man is not envious. He or she does not envy, begrudge, or brood about others' gains, honor, respect, reverence, and salutations, or veneration. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in a good destination. If instead he or she comes to, comes to the human state, he or she is influential wherever reborn. This is the way leading to being influential, not to be envious, not to envy, begrudge or brood about others' gains, honor, respect, reverence, salutations or veneration. 
There is the case where a woman or a man is not a giver of food, drink, cloth, sandals, garlands, scents, ointments, beds, dwellings, or lighting to Brahmins and contemplatives. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she repairs in a plane of deprivation. If instead he or she comes to the human state, he, is, he or she is born poor when, wherever reborn. This is the way leading to poverty, not to be a giver of food, drink, cloth, sandals, garlands, scents, ointments, beds, dwellings, or lighting to Brahmas. But then there is the case where a woman or a man is a giver of food, drink, cloth, sandals, scents, ointments, beds, dwellings, and lighting to Brahmins and contemplatives, through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in a good destination. If instead he or she comes into the human state, and he or she is wealthy wherever reborn. This is the way leading to great wealth, to be a giver of food, drink, cloth, sandals, garlands, scents, ointments, beds, dwellings, and lighting to Brahmins and contemplatives. So like, there are four kinds of foods, just to take the first one. And the first one is, we've studied this, you can watch my video, I have a two hour long video on the four nutriments. And so in food, there is physical food, then there is sensual contact, and then there is intention or motivation or mental volition or intention. And then there is consciousness. And so in giving any of these four kinds to a Brahmin or a contemplative is like or to a monk in food to the monks um, or consciousness or intent that's how you get a good reaper even in the heavens so like I have this little harp here and this horseshoe on this chain here and then it says, what does it say? I'm not sure. It's it's like a thing here. It's like a G. And then it makes the sound. And so, we have like contact with the ear. And so I just gave you a little bit of food. And that's some food for thought as well. So I just did a great thing. It's not real that hard. Continuing on. I've only got 10 minutes left. There is the case where a woman or a man is obstinate and arrogant. He or she does not pay homage to those who deserve homage. Rise up for those whom one should rise up. Give seat to those who one, whom one should give a seat. Make way for those whom one should make way. Worship those who, one sh who should be worshipped. Respect those who should be respected. Revere those who should be revered. Or honor those who should be honored. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in the plane of deprivation. If instead he or she comes to the human state, then he or she is low-born, low-born wherever reborn. This is the way leading to a low birth, to be obstinate and arrogant, and not to pay homage to those who deserve homage, nor 
rise up for, nor give seat to, nor make way for, nor worship, nor respect, nor revere, nor honor those who should be honored. But then there is the case where a woman or a man is not obstinate or arrogant, and he or she pays homage to, those who deserve homage rises up, gives a seat, makes way, worships, respects, reveres, and honors those who should be honored, through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in a good destination. If instead he or she comes to the human state, and he or she is high-born wherever reborn, this is the way leading to a high birth, not to be obstinate or arrogant, to pay homage to those, to those who deserve homage, rise up to, give a seat, make way, worship, respect, revere, and honor those who should be honored. There is the case where a woman or a man visiting a Brahmin or a contemplative does not ask, What is skillful, venerable sir? What is unskillful? What is blameworthy and what is blameless? What should be cultivated and what should not be cultivated? Ha what having been done by me will be for, will be for my long-term harm and suffering? Or what? having done by me, will be for my long-term welfare and happiness. Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in the plane of deprivation. If instead he or she comes into the human state, then he or she will be stupid wherever reborn. This is the way leading to stupidity. When visiting a Brahmin or contemplative, not to ask what is skillful or what having been done by me will be for my long-term welfare and happiness. But then there is the case where a woman or a man, when visiting a Brahmin or contemplative, asks what is skillful, venerable sir, what is unskillful, what is blameworthy, what is blameless. What should be cultivated and what should not be cultivated? What, having been done by me, will be for my long-term harm and suffering? Or what, having been done by me, will be for my long-term welfare and happiness? Through having adopted and carried out such actions on the breakup of the body after death, he or she reappears in a good destination. Instead, if he or she comes into the human state, then he or she is discerning wherever reborn. This is the way leading to discernment when visiting a Brahmin or a contemplative to ask what is skillful or what, having been done by me, will be for my long-term welfare and happiness. And so, student, the way leading to short lives, to short life and so, student, the way leading to short life makes people short-lived. The way leading to long life makes people long-lived. The way leading to sickliness makes people sickly. The way leading to health makes people healthy. The way leading to ugliness makes people ugly. The way leading to beauty makes people beautiful. The way leading to lack of influence makes people uninfluential. The way leading to influence makes people influential. The way leading to poverty makes people poor. The way leading to wealth makes people wealthy. The way leading to low birth makes people low born. The way leading to high birth makes people high born. The way leading to stupidity <coughs> makes people stupid. The way leading to discernment makes people discerning. And beings are the owners of their karma, heir to their karma, born of their karma, 
related through karma and have karma as an arb arbitrator. Karma is what creates distinctions among beings in terms of coarseness and refinement. When this was said, Supa, the student, Todea's son, said to the Blessed One, Magnificent, Master Gotama, magnificent! Just as if he were to place upright what has been overturned, to reveal what, ha what was hidden, and to show the way to one who was lost, or to carry a lamp into the dark, so that those with eyes could see forms in the same way, in the same way has Master Gotama, through many lines of reasoning, made the Dhamma clear. I go to Master Gotama for refuge, to the Dhamma and to the community of monks. May Master Gotama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge from this day forward for life. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And now I will go over there. There's a Buddhist image and state place here and meditate. And so, since I won't be sitting here anymore, I think I should turn off the light. <laughs>